Generation XL is funded in part by a grant from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas City as part of its continuing focus on children's health in the community. Blue Cross has been changing lives in Kansas City since 1938, providing innovative health and wellness programs and dependable, affordable health care coverage. <laughs> I got into the field of physical education for one reason. I was a former athlete and I wanted to coach. The team sports only model, where physical education at one time was really a training ground for the athletes. If I saw a young man that could throw the ball very well, I was trying to talk him into going out for baseball. If I had a talented runner, I would say, hey, why don't you go out for track? That was our ultimate goal. Physical education should be about physically educating all children. And that it's not just a recess period where you goof off and, and you're not accountable, and it, and it does have value and benefits. What we really need to know is that we're made to move. If you get more blood flow to the brain, oxygen to the brain, and if you hydrate the brain, the brain functions at maximum capacity. A little bit of exercise is like taking a little bit of Ritalin. So kids can be in a classroom and concentrate better, and listen better, comprehend better. They begin to explore. They begin to see what's out there. They begin to want to learn. And we're gonna improve quality of life for kids. We're gonna make them better students, better readers, behave better. They're just gonna be more, more productive citizens in our society as they come out of our American schools. Three jumping jacks, four push-ups. Physical education is something that almost everybody in society has experienced, and when you experience something, you have an opinion about it, and you feel you have a pretty good understanding. And I think in our country, I think we need to clarify the understanding of physical education. Uh, and I think, like in any field, you need to go into the history behind it to really understand where it's going into the future. And very few people in our country know the history of physical education. Uh, physical education was one of the first core curriculums added to the American school curriculum, and it was added right after World War I, and it was added by a federal government mandate. They wanted daily PE in all schools in the United States for military readiness. They were mainly talking about preparing young men to put them in good enough shape that we'd uh, strengthen our military. Um, and then as time went on, somehow the, the focus of physical education started focusing on sports skills. And every child walked in the door, our main emphasis, K-12, was to teach them how to be an athlete. Uh, and what's amazing is many schools made the mistake of requiring every child to become an athlete, and the first thing they do is they excuse the athletes from taking the class. So who we had left was we had the non-athletes who were, were not interested in sports, and we were grading and evaluating them how well they did those skills. They started teaching you basketball skills in third grade, and you did it in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, all the way to 12th grade. Now, if you didn't like basketball, you probably didn't like physical education, it probably maybe turned you off to exercise. I probably taught for 20 years before I realized what it was like to walk into a class if you had no interest in sports. It, 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 uh, it was a tough road for kids, and uh, that's why a large percentage of our population has now grown up from those bad experiences and their legislators, their school board members, their parents, and they have done everything they can to cut back on physical education because it wasn't valued. And also in that sports model, a lot of schools really didn't care what the PE teacher taught during the day as long as they were successful at coaching after school. And it's a part of our American culture that it was widely accepted. And over a period of time, that system failed us. Uh, and so we felt we had to make some changes. Instead of uh, judging kids against one another, how about measuring where they are, health and fitness-wise now, and then how they are improving themselves, and learning about their own bodies, about what they need to do to be a more healthy person. Go, go, go. And incorporating technology. 
We so often blame technology for the sedentary lifestyles that our kids live. Video games, computer screens, television screens. Why not embrace technology? Technology is here to stay. And let's embrace it and use it to get kids more physically active, whether it's heart rate monitors, dance dance revolution, video game bikes, or whatever the case, let's embrace technology to get kids more active and healthy. Nationwide, 35% of all school-aged children in the United States are either overweight or obese, and it's climbing at an astronomical rate that by 2015, it could be up to 50%. That is absolutely scary. PE for Life is gonna make a difference in that. We're gonna hold teachers accountable, administrators accountable, and we can dra dramatically improve reading scores and math scores using physical activity. Physical education is now the hub of the wheel. If I described education as a wheel, every subject area is a rung of the wheel. The hub of the wheel would be physical education. This new change of physical education could be the biggest revolution that's ever hit education in the country. Pitcher Elementary actually went through their PE for Life Academy training in the previous school year. And so they started building some momentum even before the 06-07 school year. And I think some elements of the program are, are really progressing well. Uh, they had to get creative and find some space that they could, uh, they could open up and use. Uh, and that's, that's an issue for a lot of schools. Where are we going to find the space uh, if we want to add more PE? I figured we'd have some hurdles, but I'm not very patient. <laughs> Ms. Purefoy came to me and suggested kind of like a fitness room, and I was like, well, I don't know. We got to think about that. <laughs> but she was able to convince me that, let's try it. And I was willing to try it. And we tried it, and you know, just the whole scheme of the carpeting on the floor and the stair steps, it turned into just a phenomenal place. Every bit of equipment we could think of, we started sending down to the fitness center so that we could at least try to do something. And we did have a lot of equipment. I looked at, at uh, the PE for Life program as being one where we targeted not just physical well-being, but also nutrition and you know, lifelong learning. You know, each school that we work with throughout the Kansas City metro area, throughout the country, has different dynamics. And you know there are there are different issues related to facilities, um, school budget, the support of the administration, um, the the passion and energy of the PE teachers. They're just they're just different dynamics in each one of those factors. And at Pitcher Elementary, they have uh, a lead PE teacher in Becky Purifoy, who is very energetic, very passionate, and also very willing to to change and tweak and improve. And that's so important uh, for you know, teachers that have been in the profession uh, a number of years to look at and evaluate their own program on what they can do to improve their program. How'd I do? You did. You did, you did great. So. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what we did. Yeah, I'll be turning that in. Oh, that's mine. And submitting that to you guys. Um, I've had a chance to um, observe uh, Ms. Pirafoy's class several times. I think she does a fantastic job in there. Uh, she keeps her games very active, um, students are engaged. Uh, I was in there the other day and observed a game, well, she said she kind of made up. Does this game have a name? It's called Pin in the Middle. Pin in the Middle? Pin in the Middle. It was really, you know, all the kids were really excited, they were throwing, they were working on, you know, the skills that you need that you're supposed to be proficient in, you know, as a, as a PE student. And then, uh, but they were just, they were having fun and they were engaged and they were running around, but organized. What I found fascinating was the excitement that the students had uh, and the PE teachers. They no longer were gym teachers that I remembered from my old days. And I still disparagingly call them gym teachers to tease them. Uh, but they are more like uh, scientists running around, trying to figure out what can they do to better their kids' lives. Having PE more often is, is what every PE teacher wants, to have kids more active and to prove that we are important in school, that PE is important and we're important teachers in school. Um, I certainly applaud her for her, what she does in the gym over there. She really makes good use of the time and the space. She's well organized, the equipment, 
She takes good care of everything. It's all safe. So um, I think overall they they certainly achieved and exceeded. I think in some areas what we expected, and and this is what we want a PE for Life program to look like. They have the different components. Um, you know, they have school support. They have they're gaining community support, and then the excellent uh, PE teachers, and also the support from classroom teachers. You have to have that component as well. I think most of our teachers, I'd say 99% of our teachers are, are so behind our program this year. And it, it really helps in just showing that they came in and helped paint characters in the fitness room and I had some uh, teachers that came in and helped paint in the gym. So I think they're very excited about it. They absolutely love it. They think it's really, really been great. I think the more people are enmeshed, especially the teachers, the more they're enmeshed in the program of PE for Life and the whole philosophy, the better they become. I'm impressed with all of it. I wish they had a PE for Life for teachers. <laughs> when you have a good self-image and you feel good about yourself, others in turn will feel good about you. So, The kids uh, are always excited about having fitness and physical education because they they like the, the way of being able to express themselves uh, through kinesthetic type movement. So they're, they're kind of working together to make a strong mind, strong body, strong character. I see all of the children are involved. All of the children are participating. Um, it seems to be a lot of fair play. And everyone can really, and there's variety, which is nice. I've seen them work on, you know, cardio. I've seen them, you know, with the strength, upper body, lower body, following directions, balance, you know, left brain, right brain type activities. They got some cool stuff in here, too. So, and I try out most of the stuff before it gets in here, so it is fun. Well, I like about PE is more exercise and get your body in fitness. So you can build up muscles and, and have more energy to run and have fun. I like um, the games that we play and I like that we get exercise so we can get more muscles and, and our body will be more healthier. I'm glad my school is doing PE for life because I want to lose weight this year. It's just a good feeling to have. I, I, I mentioned earlier, we are going to change education. <laughs> There's no question. This is so new that, unfortunately, probably 98% of the school districts in the United States have no clue about this new revolution of PE for Life that's happening. And we've got a, quite a task ahead of us. And you know what's exciting? It's starting here in Kansas City. Uh, your community has to embrace this. I mean, they're going to become a world leader. Uh, when we start adopting PE for Life throughout all the elementary schools, and that when they start understanding it, Literally, Kansas City could be the hub, the hub of the world for changing education, and literally around the world. There's two people that really had a major influence on my molding this whole new concept of physical education. The first was Dr. Kenneth Cooper. Uh, the father of aerobics, President Bush's personal physician. Uh, he was way ahead of his time. He was probably the first American that tried to sell the public on the importance of preventive medicine. More recently, in the last four years, never in my wildest dreams did I think as myself as a sixth grade gym teacher that I would be working with the top brain research specialist out of Harvard. <laughs> when I, what I find in the elementary school kids, they don't really, the equipment is not, nec is not as necessary. Right. It's just to have fun, right. rough and tumble play, you well, know, I like just so. roughing around. Most people think the best way, the best benefit of exercise is, is tuning up your body, losing weight, getting in shape, being more attractive. Actually, I look at it very differently. I think exercise is really something we do to keep our brains in shape, and all the side effects for the body are, are side effects, uh, welcome side effects. And in our society today, especially the past 50 years, we've become very sedentary. And this really runs counter to what our basic program is. And we need to change that. Working with Dr. John Rady from Harvard, 
we have a program we now call Learning Readiness PE, and it has been amazing. It's very simple. If you get more blood flow to the brain, oxygen to the brain, and if you hydrate the brain, the brain functions at maximum capacity. Exercise is, optimizes the uh, person and the brain to learn. It, it does it on three different levels. First, it, it activates systems that are really important for the learner, prepares the learner to learn, improves their attention, improves their ability to inhibit impulses, decreases fidgetiness and nudginess, uh, improves their motivation and their feeling of mood is better, decreases anxiety, decreases stress. So you have a better learner. It improves your mood, your attitude. It actually even will fight against uh, depression. Second, it improves the brain. It activates uh, growth hormones, uh, brain fertilizer, neurotransmitters that all make the brain's, brain cells job in learning, which is to bind to one another, easier and promotes it. It readies this to occur. So kids can be in a classroom and concentrate better and listen better, comprehend better. And thirdly, it promotes the spawning of new brain cells, something that we've just learned in the past eight, 10 years, that we humans also are making new brain cells every day uh, from our own internal stem cells that exercise helps promote the development of. And so we, we see an increase in new nerve cells in an area of the brain that's key for memory and learning, the hippocampus. Another real interesting point we found from the brain research, teachers need to listen to this, the brain shuts down to boring lectures, even though it may be good information. So that classroom teacher that's giving this perfect lecture that they think is a world beater lecture and the kids aren't scoring very well, may not have to go back and self-evaluate and say, did the kids get excited about this? Now, answer that question from your own personal experiences. If somebody's talking and it's boring, are you listening? Are you sitting there? We think if we have a captive audience, the old school, if I have five rows and five kids at each row and they have their hands crossed and their mouth shut and they're quiet, we thought education was going on. I mean, that, that is old school. And that teacher's up there giving that boring lecture and the kids are going, they're looking out the window, they're rolling their eyes and going, and they're looking at their watches. Yeah, the brain does not listen to boring things. Especially if you sit in the chair for a long time and there's no blood flow and no oxygen and no hydration. And you know how many school administrators are cutting PE to put kids in chairs longer? There ought to be a law against chair time and seat time for kids in school. I tell people all the time, if you don't let these kids get this nervous energy out, you're going to pay for it later. I've always said that a little bit of exercise is like taking a little bit of Ritalin and a little bit of Prozac. One of the big problems in, uh, in schools and in, in kids that are having difficulties with the subject or learning, whether they be ADD or dyslexia, is a, a syndrome that we call learned helplessness. It's created in all of us when we try and try and try and we don't succeed. We begin to sort of get discouraged, pull away, defend against even trying, and end up eventually, if you do that in enough areas of your life, you get depressed. Well, we now know that exercise is one way of pulling people out of that learned helplessness position. Not just a direct assault on depression, but also promotes uh, the interest in the environment again. They then recover so much quicker. And what they recover is that they begin to explore. They begin to see what's out there. They begin to want to learn. You know, many times schools are the only place that children are going to have the opportunity to be physically active. Um, they may live in neighborhoods where it's not safe to go outside. Um, they may have a situation where they have to go directly home and they can't go outside until a parent gets there. So, uh, you know, where and when are most children going to be physically active? And, you know, schools are about uh, preparing children for quality of life. And it's not just what they're learning to be successful, but it's, 
It's what they're learning about taking care of their bodies, taking care of the things that are important for success in life. Uh, my first biggest breakthrough was 18 years ago, I got one heart rate monitor in our district of 20,000 students. We now have 1,200 heart rate monitors, but I put it on a young girl. She was in sixth grade. She was doing a mile run. Uh, she was not overweight. Uh, she did not have asthma, but she was not fit. And I was used to, in a mile run, everything was based on how fast could you run the mile. Basically, a sixth grade girl that was very talented should be able to run the mile under eight minutes. And she ran 13 and a half minutes. And I use the term run very loosely because she walked most of it. And in the old days, I had a stopwatch, time and distance, national norms and observation. Under those criteria, she failed and she failed miserably. And using my military style, I would have went to her and says, you're gonna be successful in my class, you need to set higher goals, you need to work harder. That day I didn't say anything to the young girl. I went in and downloaded the heart rate monitor and I looked at it and I looked at it again. She just walked a mile and her average heart rate was 187. Max effort, she can't get, that's an A plus. What is a target heart rate and how fast is my heart beating? And when I exercise, what impact does that have on my heart? And does getting my heart into a healthy heart zone or into, a, into the target heart rate zone what impact does that have on my health and making my heart stronger? So here is um, one student that we got yesterday. Well, the student was in their zone 15 minutes and 15 seconds in their target heart rate zone. Their average heart rate was 141 beats per minute. She was only above the zone for one minute, which is really good for a fourth grade student. She was below her zone for 10 minutes and 45 seconds. So I would sit down with her then and talk with her about staying in her zone a little bit better because she was below her zone for too many minutes. The light bulbs went off that day and it completely revolutionized the way I thought about physical education. It's okay for a student to walk in a PE class if that's where their fitness level is at that day. It's an individualized kind of program where they, you work against yourself uh, using the polar monitors, uh, monitor their heart rate. Your grade is determined by how much time you spend in your zone during the week. So we truly have an assessment that's accurate based on effort and that, that's all we can ask for them. And that's how they're gonna be successful. It's good for your mind to really exercise every day. I think I'll be healthy at the end of the year because I just now know that if you eat healthy, you can live longer. I think it's important because it gets you healthier and stronger. Well, I think the big thing is, is convincing everybody that, what it, that it's the right thing to do. First, you have to switch the model to an everyday model, okay, and that takes some doing. Second is you have to switch your PE teachers to have the philosophy of fitness first and not just focus on their sports team, which has been the tradition in the past. And that's a big switch. Um, and then to educate parents and teachers about why PE is useful for their children. Uh, we don't have enough time today to discuss all the benefits of a quality physical education program or a P for Life program, as I would now describe it. Uh, it, is, it's, it has so much value. Like I said in my opening comments, everybody has their perception about physical education. They need to come back to the table and learn the new definition, the PE for Life definition of, of physical education, because there's not a parent in the country that wouldn't want their child in a daily PE for Life program. You would benefit greatly having this program in your building because it gives the children, it will get them to be physically fit. Uh, when they are physically fit and they're eating the right things and they're exercising the correct way, it will help them learn because they will have more stamina. They won't be tired in that way they could focus when they're in the room. Schools can see PE for Life and can use PE for Life as a resource partner. Uh, in advocacy as far as promoting the value and importance of a physical education program and also on the implementation side. That if a school is looking at making changes and improvement, 
we can bring examples from all over the country uh, to be able to provide as a resource for those schools going through those changes. Well, PE is for everybody. We don't uh, focus on sports. We don't make kids feel bad. I feel really healthy and I feel really sweaty. We're all in it together and we all help each other. And the kids move and we exercise. They have to know that you do have to exercise and warm up and cool down. But um, it's, it's not where you pick teams. I never allow them to pick teams. And we play games that are fun. It's a partnership that works. And, and um, I had an old adage, you know, the, the old African adage that we've had for years, and that is, it takes a village to raise a child. There's a new word in this day and age that we had, it takes a village to raise a healthy child. And I think Kansas City is proof of the fact that P for Life adopted the village of Kansas City are gonna start raising healthy children over time. Vegetables like a carrot, they'll help your skin so it doesn't get all foggy and stuff like that.